I sure hope Explorer Thief doesn't run into a pack of wild coyotes or something. Today we're in the Nevada National Wildlife Refuge. It's 1.6 million acres of land. It's the second largest refuge in, in the United States outside of Alaska. We're gonna cook a little breakfast up and take the e-bike for a spin. Let's get going. Oh, well, this is how I hook up the bikes like this. I moved over these things right here so that the tires were just a little bit below. See how they are? You can see from underneath here. That way it keeps the front tire chalk and it keeps it from going back and forth as I turn corners because when they were close together it was almost like a flat platform where the bike was allowed to roll from one uh, divot to the next. And then what I did is I just moved the outermost one out a little bit just so it hits the tire. Makes the whole thing nice and sturdy. Doesn't move around. I used two tie downs. One in the front and then one in the back. Going to where they're supposed to. And as you can see, it's very sturdy. Here's camp this morning. It's how it's set up. Got my e-bike out here. I'm gonna make some breakfast. And I got the scottle out, so we're gonna cook it on that. It's early morning. These things help. These long reach lighters are great for doing things like this. Gonna whisk those up a bit. Because we're gonna have a scramble. It's probably about good enough. Let's light the oil. Around. This thing comes really nicely seasoned, but a little oil never hurts. I do it each time. It cleans up really easy, really well. Do you hear that? Sounds good, don't it? And because the uh, scottle or this cooking disc is hot in the middle and it gets progressively warm on the outside. I've moved the bacon around just a little bit just to make sure it's cooking evenly. Now what this is going to allow me to do is get to have a little bacon grease to throw in the hash browns on. And then of course last will come the eggs after a good wipe down. We'll have some bacon eggs and hash browns. It's a nice day out in the desert. It's not too windy. It's not very hot right now. It's nice and cool actually. It's probably around, I don't know, 79, 80 degrees but it is expected to get to 100 later on today, so maybe the awning will go up then. Usually, it's not a good idea to put your awning up at night while you're sleeping in case it gets windy. It'll start flopping around, it'll keep you awake, so just to avoid the aggravation, it's always good to take care of that, get that out of the way before you turn in for the night, and then put it back up in the midday sun. All right, I think it's flip time. So let's turn it. It's cooking up nicely, it looks like. 
the sound of propane out in the wilderness and also bacon cooking is pretty cool. I think you all know what I mean when I say that. It looks like we're ready to put the hash browns on. So Give you guys a break for a second while I let those get it's brown. It's about time to move these up to the side here. There you go, butter. I want to burn those, so let's kind of move it around here. Because we're having scrambled. These are almost done. I think we're going to call that done. Let me turn this off. Bring everything in just a little bit. All right, so let's plate that up. Here's the plate. We got one bacon. We got two bacon. And we got three Mr. Eggs. Some hash browns. There you have it. That's breakfast for this morning out in the Las Vegas desert. As you can see, it looks very nice, right? Don't drop it. Don't drop it, Explorer Steve. Oh, I got my finger in the, ow, it's hot. Let's try the bacon. Nice and crisp. A little bit of egg with some hash brown toast to you. And take a bite of bacon before you swallow. So good. You know, it's so nice to get away. Get away from all the noise of politics and uh, virus, whatever. I don't think you're supposed to say it on YouTube. I think they get mad or they it triggers something they want to listen. But there is nobody out here. And there's just miles and miles of uh, trail. Really rough trail. It's washboard. It's not the funnest thing to, to uh, ride on. Some of it's smooth, but most of it is just really rough. You know, it'll rattle you right to your core. But did a little overlanding to get here, keeping with my uh, urban lander theme, you know, to where I do some city, I do some camping, sometimes I have to drive through terrain to get to where I'm going. And this is one such case. After I got done eating, I'm going to take you guys on a trail ride with me and just look around, see what they have. You can get as far away from it as you want to. As for me, I just wanted to get far enough away, so I didn't go a million six hundred thousand miles away. I just went until I was alone. So let me shut this camera off, and I'll finish my food, get back to you when it's time to hit the trail. But you thought that Nevada was all just ugly desert, but a lot of Las Vegas is beautiful, you know, especially in the sunrise and in the sunset moments. As you can see, there's just miles and miles of open range with the mountains in the background. They are much closer in person. I've got this on super view, so it's hard for anything to do it justice. But you can actually even see a big old tree off in the distance there, kind of by itself, and not a sound. And the ground looks like Mars, right? It's uh, mostly rock on top of rock. I bet this would be really difficult to dig in if you tried to dig a hole. I don't know if my my awning stakes are going to go into the ground very well with this. I mean, look at that. It's 
like that all the way down. It's not surface rocks. Having a good time. Nobody's wearing a mask. There's no reminders of the world except for the ones I give myself in my mind right here. But let me shut off and get cleaned up. Show and tell to anybody new on the front floorboard of the 4Runner, I have the 7 gallon Aquatainer. It's outfitted with a water pump that's pressure sensitive, meaning that it, it's hooked up to 12 volt and it turns on when I use it and turns off when I stop. I don't know how I lived without it and with a 10 foot hose I usually hang it out the passenger side window and it's there at the ready. It comes equipped right now with a spray hose. You can actually take a shower with this in a pinch if you have a shower cabana. Here's exciting footage of it in action. Just a little bit of show and tell, I got this quick tire inflator. It comes with a nozzle right there and then you buy these 16 gram to 22 CO2 fast tire refill cartridges. And if you get a flat on the road, you can refill it. Now, I know what you, a lot of you are thinking, but what if it has a hole in it? Well, next time I'm gonna cover what I did to have some flat preventative and some other accessories that I got for my bike. But just to let you know, this is going in the pocket. Well, it's a beautiful day in the desert today and I'm glad I have pedal assist to get me up and down these little hills. This means I can go further. I try to avoid the big rocks poking up. I don't want to hurt my tire. Stay in the gravelly areas. You can see there are some big rocks around here. I am in no hurry. Just hope I don't run into a pack of coyotes. I have no idea where this stuff goes. So the bike does a pretty good job of rolling over the soft sand, the rough stuff. Let's take a little detour over here. Here's some soft gravel. Rolled right over it. Let's go up the side of this hill. When I look at these sharp rocks, something tells me I probably should have wore long pants and a sleeved shirt. So as for this bike right here, a lot of people have been asking, you know, do you recommend that bike or 
you know, why did you choose that one over other ones? Things like that. My answer is, is that I don't recommend any bike right now, really. I got this because I wanted it. I did do some research on it. I like that it has a large battery capacity, 19.2 amp hours, 52 volt system. It gets good distance. And I think that bicycles right now, they are at a turning point. Kind of like cell phones and computers were at one point, you know, where there's a lot of competition and only the strong survive after that, right? Remember when they used to have Motorola and the flip phones and the, they were making them smaller and smaller and then suddenly you know, Apple came onto the scene and that was a standard by which all others were judged. And so now you have a lot of copies of that variation. So I think that bikes, electric bikes are in the breakout phase. There are some good products out there. The motors have come up quite a bit. They're a lot more powerful, a lot more fast, have a lot more torque. I think I'm going to get out of the soft stuff and go over here in the gravelly area. Maybe I was wrong. It seems that they're, they're making good product, but they're lacking on the service. Like, they don't answer the phone when you call. And anybody who gets an electric bike right now who thinks they're going to go into a bike shop if it breaks down, no, you're kind of fooling yourself because a bicycle mechanic does not a e-bike mechanic make. You're talking electricity. You're talking electronics, you're talking circuit boards, battery power. And these things are beyond the ability of your typical average bicycle mechanic who works on the mechanical components only. And so if anybody's wondering if I recommend this bike or any bike really, you know the answer is I can't recommend it for anybody to get just because all the components are things aren't there and they're getting up to the price where people are going to start demanding that's a beautiful scene right there look at that it's getting to the point where people are going to start demanding service good warranty and ability to back it you start getting around 2000 some of these you know like the super 73 everybody likes because they make the battery look like a gas tank and they put it on top there and it's really cutesy people want that but they're going to pay a thousand dollars more for that in a lot of cases 500 to a thousand dollars more depending on which one you choose i just picked this one because it's got the power the motor the battery capacity to that it's just not as cutesy it looks like a big mini bike that you might have had when you were a kid. These are good for people who want to have something to ride around. Looks like I have a little bit of a rough area up ahead, so let me stop talking and get through this soft sand. All right, made it through the really soft stuff. On the back end of this mountain now. This is what the bike is nice for. It gets you around further, faster. Today's a hot day, it's gonna be upper 90s. And I'm not wearing myself out. I'm gonna have enough energy at the end of the day to do camp stuff. Make something to eat, set up stuff, do other things besides, you know, making biking the highlight of my day. Which it is still the highlight of my day, but it's not <laughs> its not going to zap me. Well, I would hate to fall into one of these pointy cactus, like that one right there, right on the side of the road. So, uh, soft dirt. You know, I'm careful when I go around those, of course. But... Anyway, I think within the next three years, you're going to see some uh, companies come to the forefront and uh, some, some will be left behind. The innovators will always win out with uh, technology. You know, so as the uh, dependability gets better, as service centers open up across the country where people can get them fixed, people are going to feel more comfortable spending that kind of money on an electric bicycle. And hopefully by then they'll have even better range and better batteries and motors and and more options. Uh, see animal tracks. Don't come after me, coyotes. I've got, what's it say? 163 miles on this so far. So.
take it easy guys we'll see you next week so if you like the video please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell so you get future notifications thank you very much bye bye bye